you, you, you said something that is interesting. Um, you talked about how you collaborate. Yes. How you collaborate with other people. Yes. Remember what we are really discussing in this session yeah. is about how real estate affects other, other people. people. Yes. And then um, try and tell us um, the kind of people you employ, as in the chain. We're trying to see the chain reaction now. For every job you get, mm -hmm. how many people get jobs? You understand? For, for every either renovation job or, you know, building job anything you get any job you get Let, let's let's look at the chain okay my supplier comes from somewhere called uh, Ayitaju. supplier what is it's uneducated what, what does it supply you? granite okay sand um gravel anything i need i can get for him on credit i don't even need it. i just call him i say i need a truck or such or such okay. he gets me that if i need trucks to move material I have some people at Niger Dog. Okay. They they live around that area, so they know how to access it. If I need cranes, I have people in Hopper. If I have the need for some workers, I know some people that I like deal with and I need, I need energy. If I'm doing casting, I go to Nushin. If I'm doing renovation, I have a lady that does 3D for me, so the client can see what it's going to look like even before we start. If I'm doing a structure in Okwanja that the soil is loose, my architect is in Amado. But technology has made everything easier. I send him the brief, he sends me, he doesn't even have to come until when. So that's just summary. My IT guy is a manager in one of the schools in the Kizi, IT manager. And when I want to do something smart, I don't even go there. I just tell him, this is the layout. This is what we want to do. People that do electrical things for me, what they ask me for is, do you have the plan of the place? So, it's, so, so, on, on so that's an average, that's like yeah. 15 people. At least 15 At people. minimum, that's and for, then to get those, to those 15 people also would have to give jobs to other people. Be for instance, the guy that supplies you sand and gravel, he's mm -hmm. not going to bring he's, it. Somebody will drive it. He's not going to bring it himself. Somebody so will drive it. He's going to rent the truck. He will pay, he will pay um, their, their levy that they pay to the suppliers association. Okay. For everywhere you go to, they have, you have to pay. So if you are going to supply an aquarium, aqua, you go and report yourself. And then you pay to the people there that you are coming to do business in the area. Okay. So that's giving those people money as well. That's servicing them. So I'm indirectly servicing him, the driver that drives the truck, the people that are in that area. So even if it's like a few trades on, there are certain there's this, an association there that you have to inform them that you're coming to do business there, and you also pay them, and then they also remit to some other people as well. So the chain can it can span up to. Hundred people. There's somebody that brought the business as well. Of course. The person that brought the business brought the business because a need was available. Right. So he didn't just decide to build the house, except his money is if you have borrowed money, you have or you have gotten a facility that you are going to service for a period, you are actually building for a purpose. Mm -hmm. So any building going on on Kingsway Road is because you know that you can fill that place. So by the time you build a ten story building, there will be maybe ten offices and then 10 individuals that you are servicing and then that, those places will be cleaned, the elevators will be maintained, yes. the car park will be, there will be drivers there, there will be cleaners there, there will be yes. restrooms there, there will be, so, fittings like you, you, you will do cabinets there, so I'm not people no, we, will, we will talk to Mr. So, so, <laughs> so um, his own co chain. construction, like I said, is the moment you collaborate, the business is lucrative. It's just that we want to do as much as we can to make the education available to people that people were building more houses yeah people were living people I still it took communities to build those mud houses it took communities it wasn't just it one wasn't person just that one would person. just put everything it, that, that, that's where i'm going if you go to places like if it's currently in china india all these places where you have like mud slides when you are in that kind of community you cannot just recover on your own it will take people to come together but that's what's not happening here we're building iron properties that are empty Whereas there's land available that we can continually build. That even if we continue, we will not even match up to the, 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 what we are demanding. Because a lot of people, I like to go to the beach. I've gone to every beach on the Texas, all the way to the end of Kwanja, as far as Ogombo Atika. There are a lot of people living off grid. You see all these alternative routes that we don't know. We are on Lake Expressway, we are on Ikorodu, we are feeling very okay with ourselves. Lagos by Expressway. Every road that you're looking at, left and right, there are people living on normal spaces off the grid. Yeah. Completely off the grid. It's when you get it that you realize that no matter how much houses you build, 
as far as they are not within reach, we are still not covering that deficit. Thank you very much, Akin. Well, it has been said that we have 17 million housing deficit. That was as far as far back as 2011 mm -hmm. that they took that. I'm sure we are on probably 20 million housing deficit now. And we said that to cover that, we have to build 1 million houses every year. I don't think we are doing. I don't think we are doing 5,000 houses every year. I don't think so. I, I, that's just my own opinion. With some some people may be. You understand? But that's just my own opinion. So, um, Kaldi. Tell us about your own industry, how the supply chain goes, from when you get a job, everyone, I mean, we just want to know yeah. how far reaching this whole thing is. Yeah, it's, it's, quite, um, it's quite large. For instance, most clients uh, want to see what their kitchen will look like. Yeah. So you want to conversion. So at that point, an architect comes on board. Okay. Architect will charge you. <laughs> yeah. After that stage, if eventually the job is being then approached, immediately move to the factory. Okay. At the point of going to the factory, from the to the factory, you need to probably procure your materials and then you laminate. That's there is a point where you do that procurement. Okay. So there's kind of a trading aspect in that regard. Right. So organizations have you know a trading app in house. Okay. So that's another aspect of it. After that, you can go to the factory where you know all these animators are cost dimensions. Okay. So that's another an entity entirely. We have them in fact their numbers, factories that does cutting, taping and all that. So after that then you want to move to site, is either you have an in-house transport system or you have to engage the transporters to do that. Okay. After that, you have your installers. Okay. Is either you employ them, put them on salary, or you also do what you contract it out. Wages. Yeah, pay them wages, you know, pay as well and all that. Beyond that, you now have your granite guys. Okay. They supply your granite. You have the guys that install your granite. You have yeah. to buy wood. Uh, you have to buy wood. Definitely. For the, the matter at the initial stage. Now you're getting to the point of installation, the granite has come in place. A different entity entirely will supply your granite. The different installer will install your granite. Then you also have to by the fittings, the kitchen appliances. That's also an so big industry. So yeah, so you, you are going to tell us about that industry, but please continue. Okay, so that's an like industry on its own because you can't have a kitchen complete without appliances in it. So after doing that, you also have an analysis of installers that also want to install your appliances. So then you can see a lot of parties coming together. Then the finishing that comes on board. Usually, like we do, we are keeping our kitchen is complete. We have a team that are specifically good in what in polishing. We also have a very very you know, detailed finishing. To make sure they come up more. Yes, yeah. we polish any point that needs to be covered. We cover it. But more like a quality control point. Okay. They also come on board to check it out. Okay. So you can see the process that it takes from yeah. getting the owner, the architect on board, transporting, getting your materials, different materials. Uh, some are about to skip, but yeah. you know you need to skip because that makes it one unit. It's different components come together and it becomes one. That's a okay. beauty kitchen for you. Okay. So post post recession. Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, pre recession. Yes. How how viable was this? I mean how viable was this industry? How many jobs on the average did you get? You know. Pre recession, honestly. Just on almost every month. Every month. Every month. It's, it's, it's constant because development comes up every day. New plans come up every day. You see developers come up with new projects almost on a monthly basis. I mean, you keep getting calls. And yes, at kitchens. that point, if are some developers trying to have their kitchen design at that point where you're still trying to have drawings intact. Mm. So from that point, you're already getting calls. Okay, we want to have so so kitchen. No more than kitchen. Some people want to look at and take a look. You know, they start, they start discussing. So, the more projects you have in terms of development, the more calls you get. So, it's directly related somehow. Yeah. So, the moment those development also reduced, definitely, yeah, the same impact is on us. Yeah. And then also, that's parallel to. All our own change. Yes, well. now, definitely. We get calls every day. 
Uh, so we've not gotten calls from you for some time. Are you okay? He told me I'm fine. He does the market. Yeah. Because they are going to call them on a monthly basis soon. Of course. So, yes. like you rightly said, the chain, honestly, you, you may not be able to estimate it. Yeah. We can't really estimate it. Because we will only be talking about the, those ones that we relate with. The people we relate with at the same time also have people they relate with. They relate with, yeah. So, you may not be able to estimate it. All right, to, to our viewers, remember we are only talking to a furniture maker and a civil engineer. There are so many other people that are involved one way or the other with the real estate sector. We have, um, we have people that make doors, yes. the door makers, the door suppliers. Yes. We have um, all these guys in the fact, white goods it's industry. It's not, it's not the furniture for instance. You know we have installers for kitchens, we have installers for wardrobes. So they're different. They are different. Some okay. of them might tell you they can do both. But we know that this person, his strength is more in about wardrobes. This one is more experienced in kitchen fittings. Kitchen fittings. Even some, they will give you advice on doors. And you know that this guy knows what he's talking about. But when you call him for kitchen, it's a different working entirely. Some of them are very, very, you know, in terms of, you know, their craftsmanship is more of, you know, coming up with something creative. So you can see there are different areas that we can break it down to. So it depends on what you know you are really trying to achieve at every point in time. At the time is you know yeah. which you actually go for. All right, all right. Um, I told you were going to tell us a little about the white goods industry, talking about the fittings. Yes, yes. Please, how uh, big is? I know uh, we're not going to mention. <laughs> we're not going to mention brands. We're not going to mention it's, brands. It's, it's quite. But, uh, it's a very big market because if I can say that um, if the kitchen market is, uh, is like is this big, then the kitchen appliance is also this big. It it's at the same level. What about the after sales service? In fact, that is a new market that's coming on board now. We are not really familiar with that. I'm not saying to you, but you know, since beauty kitchen now comes up, it's a lot of technical appliances, social appliances. The only way you can maintain it over a period of time is for you to have you know, a good after sales system in place. Yeah. So, for instance, now some of our clients will even put it as part of our bill every four to three years. Okay. We'll be coming on a regular basis to check your analysis. Okay. It's a way of marketing anyway. So, you have expensive plans outside there now. A lot of developers are more interested in how the kitchen looks. So, one of the selling points is the kitchen, which you know. So when you get those expensive brands, you must be careful about the usage. So that's where our is coming on board. It's, it's, it's becoming a very, very big part of the market. You yeah. must have a very, very good autosis system for any brand you want to use. We are, we, we are there. We know the brands. But what will probably, you know, influence the decision of so which brand I recommend to my client is the autosis. Because those clients don't really know this brand very well. Mm -hmm. But you know, they rely on their own advice. Go go see. So, for integrity's sake, if I do recommend a brand, I must make sure that if anything happens to those appliances, which you call, I can check the result. So, it is quite big. Put at the top, at the low, you know, just look at what you want to get it. All right. Thank you very much. Well, in case you are still wondering what we are trying to narrow all this down to, we are trying to let the government know and whoever is responsible for the housing sector that look. If the real estate sector does not work, you are killing a lot of people. It's not just about builders, it's not just about uh, buyers, it's not just about agents, it's not just about real estate practitioners. You are actually killing a lot of people. You are taking 5.2 million jobs. I mean, you are putting 5.2 million jobs at Jeopardy. So, I think, personally, that the easiest and fastest way to even get out of this whole recession is to make the real estate sector, the housing sector work. Remember, we're already talking about 20 million housing deficit. So how hard can it be? The demand is there. All you need to do is make funding available, mortgage system work, and single digits, sing, single digit interest, and then also um, the terms. The terms must be reasonable. You understand? And all this will pick up. Imagine, just imagine the, the chain reaction. If real estate alone works, I know it's fine to go into agriculture. I'm not disputing all that, but please, I think somebody should start thinking about real estate. 
I think somebody should really, really start thinking about real estate. So, last words, please, gentlemen. I mean, I've, I've, I've given I, my advice. I, um, there's, the discussion is a continuous discussion, okay. but you have said something very key. We have unskilled, we have skilled, we have semi skilled. Just to know which to apply at every point because that's the only way that you can save money and get the functional t results on whatever you're doing. Um, let's not put square pegs in round holes. If someone is an architect, give him the job of an architect. Yeah. If someone is an engineer, give him the job of an engineer. If this person does 3D, let the person do your 3D. I met someone that was coming from Dubai. He had no time. I was even introduced to him as a third party. He was a 3D that sold the job. Not the architectural design, not the <coughs> location, nothing. But the fact that he could, we could meet him at a hotel quickly, over a glass of drink, show him what his five bedroom bungalow would look like, even though he's somewhere. Do you understand? He was happy with it. And afterwards, his dad was coming all the way from Abu Legba to just be monitoring for him. And when he came and saw the quality of work, the man said, when this, the party that introduced was already coming, why are your prices so high? Why do you not want to cut corners? Let's just do it like that. They said there's one two-story building here. There's such foundation they use. I said, let's do it this way. But when the man came, the man realized that these people, look at all these points here. They are giving you a solid structure. That justified that uh, there wasn't a lot of money made on it, but it's a simple, it justified what we were doing. At least it's a good feedback. At least not everybody will tell you. Some people will keep complaining and saying that, but eventually the cream always rises to the top. If you continue doing what you're doing yeah. properly, sure. opportunities will come. So, you advise professionals just stay on your just lane. Stay on your lane. <laughs> forget right. recession, forget you would. If you're a professional, okay. you will go to some things, some things will come to you. Eventually, if you're a professional, things will come to you. If you just do it, uh, there are properties that have been with us two, three years. And it's just maybe on Monday that someone say, can you imagine? When we saw it first, it was bare land. Now, somebody has built on this side, somebody has built on this side. The two of them agreed and interlocked the street. Gated this side, gated this side. That location has changed. Of course. Completely. From sand and leaves to now two buildings, a space in the middle, completely interlocked road, gated on both sides. And it's been there for, for more than five years. And it's right in the middle of Lekki. Nobody doing anything with it. But it's information. And who told me about this thing? My developer, uh, my supplier that never went to school. He's not a professional. He's just a streetwise supplier. That is all. So, by giving that person information, you give information. I had never been to Lekki Futurism. He took me there. I had never been to a Lekki before. To even know, I couldn't even know where a Lekki was. It was someone, a person that took me doesn't even know that I didn't know where a Lekki was. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, your, your, whatever it is that you do will create a, a way for you if you stick with it. If you are consistent and if you have it, like I said from the beginning, if you have a passion for it, just give the right people the right jobs. It makes your life easy. Thank you very much, Aki. Uh, you last one briefly for um, it's more about the. I want to, you know, um, it's more about the environment because there's really no business that can try an environment that is not conducive. Mm -hmm. Like you already said, the government needs to play a big role in this. Yeah. The furniture industry is quite big, very big, very, very big. And we have different chains linked to it. But you know, because of you know, how the environment is structured, operating in that business is only is getting far more difficult. Only those that probably have a huge client base, those that probably were able to you know, sustain their standard over the years, that probably still late <coughs> right now. A lot of business are coming up and are going down. We have to tell why. Probably some you know, government policies are not very yeah. well. So these are Issues that probably the government needs to look at. We need to support, you know, look at content. We've had some clients, you know, that have this preference of importing the kitchens and all that. And eventually, when they install this kitchen to call it for installation, you look at what they've imported. It's so not practical. Sometimes you feel sad. Yeah. Like, what's the point? What's the big deal? You know, where else? But why 
do we have such mentality? It's because the environment we have is part of not giving people room to really express itself. You know, people try to cut corners all because they want to get a job. Because if you give them a very good bill, a good coat, you know, they'll give you a good job. The next thing you hear is that I want to have an import is my brother. So how do you get a job? You need to have a chance to reduce your price. Your, your condition. When you're doing that, your know, standard is being compromised. Mm -hmm. So but when the environment is very good, you see whereby, for instance, we would love to have our own trading arm where we import our landmates and all that. We would have love to have our own factory where we can do our cutting ourselves. So it should have been a, a robust system. But because like it, like you said, you can't even walk up to a bank now and get a good, you know, interest rate yeah. and all that. Mm -hmm. So the business is there, the industry is there, but you know, operating in that industry is not conducive because of all these factors and those are related. So, you know, in a nutshell, we just need to have the environment that supports growth. Support growth that supports entrepreneurs. You know, yes, where yeah. people can come on board and you know implement the skill that we have in this country. Thank you very much. Sorry, can I just add one? Okay. okay. Briefly. Okay. Briefly, very briefly. I I agree with you that there's support needed, but there's also a factor that is important that we have to take into consideration. Because of the innovation we've talked about, uh, because of the recession, we've talked about innovation. That means there's more competition. Yeah. That's something that we have to take very, very important note of. The competition is making people more innovative. It's making the customer have more choice. That's why I use the telecom as an example, first of all. So that more choice, some people sell online. I know somebody that, we did a light box for her just to take pictures of regular fabric. And she said it quadrupled her sales. She sells material. We did a light box with plumbing pipes and put LEDs to cast out all the shadows. This lady said her sales quadrupled because of the quality of pictures that she was posting. She didn't do anything apart from that box. So the innovation too, apart from the support, I'm saying this competition. So anybody that wants to really stay in that industry needs to also continuously innovate. innovate. All right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this session. Please, I'm sure you guys are all operating in industries that affect the real estate sector one way or the other. Why don't you send us a comment? Let's know how your industry impacts on the real estate sector, or how the real estate sector impacts on your industry. Send us a comment. Uh, follow us on Instagram at Sugrandio. And please always remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is also Sugrandio. Thank you until next time. God bless.